Everyone in the town knows her name. Hey, Lou. Hey, Lou. What up, Lou? No one messes with Lou. She doesn't have the best bedside manner. Hey, guys. My name is Lisa M. Waring, and this is Real Talk, a podcast where I talk about TV shows and movies more extensively and how art imitates life, imitates art. Today, we're checking out the Netflix movie, Lou, about a elderly woman who rescues a kidnapped girl. I mean, it's way more than that. And when I say elderly, I'm not, I don't really mean like, you know, nursing home level, but you get it. As always, spoilers ahead. Let's get into it. We open up with a series of shots of an older woman played by Allison Janney and her dog, Jax. Allison Janney's character is named Lou. She is standing in the rain, enjoying that. She's digging up a box, uh, putting stacks of cash in envelopes, mm, ominous much, and burning old documents that look like they've been redacted. We see her sit down in a chair. She has a shotgun pulled up to her neck as if she's gonna pull the trigger. Fade to black, gunshot goes off. And the title card, Lou, shows up. It appears that she has shot a deer. She takes the deer and her dog, Jax, and she drives into town. We see it's like a small inner coastal town off of, I think, the island of San Juan, it said. Everyone in the town knows her name. Hey, Lou. Hey, Lou. What up, Lou? No one messes with Lou. She doesn't have the best bedside manner. She goes to the bank. And we see that an old timey television is playing uh, at the President Ronald Reagan's speech talking about the 1953 coup of Iran. Lou seems to take an interest in this broadcast. And I'm like, Ronald Reagan, are we in the 80s? And then I saw a gas station that said 83 cents a gallon. Are we in the 80s? She goes to the teller. She's like, I want to empty my bank account. Teller pulls it up. We don't know how much money is in there, but by the teller's wide-eyed expression, it's a lot of cheese. Cheddar, cash. What is the new term for money these days? I can't keep up. As Lou is heading to her truck, we see over the shoulder of someone at a telephone booth watching her. We don't know who this person is. We just see a pair of eyes through the reflection. At her truck... The sheriff of the town is waiting for her, and they're having a little bit of a chat. He notices she's having trouble with her hand. She's got arthritis in that hand, and he recommends a copper bracelet that his niece gave him. He shows her his arm where it helps his arthritis, and she brushes him off. Lou's tough. She going to thug it out. As Lou is driving off in her truck, going through the heavily wooded area, we hear on the radio that a huge storm is coming. The residents need to be prepared. Next, we see Hannah, played by the lovely Journey Smollett. She is in an awesome jean jacket from the 80s. She's doing laundry, playing hide and seek with her little daughter, V. Hannah finds V hiding under the porch. And they like have a nice little laugh, a little giggle. And then V, who's about, I think, six or seven in this movie, she asks her, Mom, it's been two years. When is dad coming home? Is he still looking for the treasure? And Hannah says, yes, he's still away. And she wants to know, okay, when, when will he get home? Will he come home after he finds the treasure? And Hannah changes the subject conveniently. She tells her, go play hide and seek. All right. So dad is not in the picture. Wonder why. Lou pulls up in her pickup and she tells Hannah, hey, need the rent tomorrow. Hannah's kind of like, well, you know, the supplies for the storm. Lou cuts her off. No, rent. Pay me my money tomorrow on the table. Hannah's like, all right, fine. And Lou drives off to her house, which is actually next door, but next door in country terms. So they can see each other's houses, but there's a good distance of land between them. Lou opens her mouth to say something like she wants to say something to Hannah decides against it, and just speeds off. It almost hits V, who's running across the little dirt road. 
I think everybody's heart stopped, including mine, during this scene. Hannah snaps at Lou and she says, hey, there's a little girl playing around. Stop driving around so fast. And Lou tells her, the world is not a playground. Teach your kid how to take care of herself. Sound advice. Harsh delivery. A little cold on nuance for like six-year-old. But sound advice nonetheless. Hannah it does not like Lou. Lou goes to her house. V goes inside. And Hannah gets a visit from Chris a guy that she's been seeing. And I'm like, excuse me, ma'am. What's going on with your husband? Well, turns out he died three months ago, so she's a widow. My bad. This is why you don't jump to judgment so quickly, guys. You don't know what's going on. From afar, from her house, Lou was watching them. Stalker much, Lou? Nosy neighbors, am I right? Chris asks Hannah, when are you gonna tell V about her dad? And Hannah's like, in due time, basically. Like, don't rush me. It's a heavy subject. It's, it is. I mean, I wouldn't even know where to. I don't know. Let's not get into it. But it's a heavy subject. Chris gets into his old GMC van, which my dad had a van like this. I have very fond memories of this van and being tossed back and forth with my sister when we were little in the back. Because if you guys know about them 80s GMC vans, not a lot of seats in the back. If at all. Fun times. So Chris is driving along in his van and he sees a hitchhiker. And mind you, it is pouring down rain right now. The storm has entered the chat. And he stops for the hitchhiker and he says, hey, can I get a ride? He goes, yeah, come on. Come on. Come on in. Let's go. I don't recommend this, guys. Just because you are a big, strong, burly dude doesn't mean you can't. Never mind. Let's not. I don't recommend. Let's leave it at that. So Chris and the hitchhiker are driving along, chopping it up, talking about the music, and they come to a stop sign. Without warning, the hitchhiker attacks Chris, and we don't see what happens after. Meanwhile, Lou's at home going through old black and white pictures of like a lighthouse of her when she was younger, and she just tossed them in a fire. And she pulls out like a reel, like a film reel, and she looks at each section and it's showing um flashbacks of like war and fire and people running screaming things like that tosses it too as the storm rages outside hannah is just spending time with v who is making bracelets and she starts to tell v about her father and then kind of backtracks And stops. Again, it's a very hard thing to talk about. So, I get it. At Lou's house, she's sitting down writing on a letter. And we're hearing the voiceover of some of what the letter is saying. And it it kind of sounds like the last will and testament. Her talking about mistakes or, or decisions that she's made that she feels left the world in a more dangerous place. We jump back over to Hannah's house where the lights have gone off. She gets on a raincoat, leaves V in bed, journeys down the street to the breakers. Remember, this is like royal, royal, (laughs) rural (laughs) country on an island. And it's the 80s, so no cell phones, guys. No internet, no nothing. And even if there were, pretty sure the storm knocked out the power of that too. As a matter of fact, the whole area, I believe, is literally just Hannah's house and... Lou's house. While Hannah is down the street trying to work the breakers, we see someone has entered her house and is going into V's room. Hannah notices Chris's van and she's like, what, what, what? And she opens the back door and there is Chris strung up. He is done to done, if you know what I mean. She immediately thinks about V and runs back to the house. V is gone. And on the bed is a picture of V with the hitchhiker posing for a picture. And on the back of it, it says, hi, mommy, my turn. Yeah, the hitchhiker, guys, is her husband, V's dad, who, spoiler alert, is not dead. We cut back to Lou, who is sitting in the chair with the gun to her throat. Hannah busts through the door and she is like, we got to call the sheriff. We got to call everybody. V's gone. Her dad took her. And Lou's like, whoa, whoa, hold on. Her dad took her? Her dad's alive? Yeah. 
Catch up. So Hannah is panicking for obvious reasons. And she's talking about he was a Green Beret. He, I've seen the court documents. He tortured people for fun. He's nuts. He's crazy. Lou's like, listen, the phones are down. Everything's down. There's no point. We're not going to be able to get the sheriff. We've got to go get him. And Hannah's like, he's no match for you. Lou's built out instructions, packing guns and gear. And she's like, we got to hurry so I can track him. I don't know, Hannah. Seems like Lou was up to the challenge. They both hop in Lou's car, which won't start, which is strange. She gets out, she looks at the trunk, and she sees a homemade bomb. She grabs Hannah, and they go for cover, just as the truck blows up. And you see, in the distance, somebody with night vision boggles on, watching. Okay, it's clearly a setup. And Jax, the dog, also comes along for the journey. Hannah can't figure out how he faked his death. But Lou's like, no, focus. Go to the nearest house. Try to get a hold of the sheriff. I'm going to go look for V. Anna's like, <laughs> nice try, sweetie. That's my daughter. I'm going to go as well. So she goes with her and they start following the trail. V wakes up and she sees that she's in some kind of cabin, in like a little buggy carrier. And she sees the man, the hitchhiker. She gets a little scared, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he's like, no, 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 it's me. It's, it's daddy. His name is Philip. She seems relieved to see him, but she's also a little guarded with his presence and she's where's mommy and he's like we're going on an adventure mommy will follow us eventually okay he gives her a walkman which is basically a tape player what we would have used to listen to music back then before cd players and ipods and phones we've come so far so hannah and lou they're walking through this torrential rain and they come across a cabin and they see two guys standing outside. And Hannah goes, oh, man, those are two guys from his units. They are ruthless like he is. Lou gives Hannah her gun and a knife and says, if someone gets too close, stab him in the eye. A man can't kill what he can't see. Hannah's like, all right, where did you learn how to do all this? Girl Scouts. Okay, Lou. The Girl Scouts. Lou approaches the cabin, stumbling and limping and passes herself off as an old, crippled woman who has lost her dog and needs some shelter from the cold she convinces the two guys to let her go in it's a bit of a tense scene because these two guys are also guarded i mean she's a defenseless old woman what are you worried about guys mm. crap hits the fan and lou tries to get up and one guy stops her she throws some hot soup in his face Turns the table over, dodges bullets from the other guy, pulls out her gun, shoots that guy in the head, kills him, and then she goes head to head with the other dude. And it gets very, very rough. The guy manages to bite a big gaping, like, gash in her arm. I mean, I'm sorry, in her hand. Get that checked, Lou. She gets him back. She gets a hold of the open can of soup and, like, cuts him with the ridge of the can and demands to know where Philip took V. The guy tells her, oh, Eagle Bay. I don't know her anything else. And of course, you know, she got the information that she wanted from him. Ends him. Hannah comes in gun poised, but Lou already took care of the guys. Jax tries to lick up the blood. Ugh. Lou's like, ah, Jax, well, I'll tell you about that. Okay, not your first time. Got it. Lou finds a postcard with a message on the back that says, old habits die hard. Having fun yet. Okay, very curious. She hides it from Hannah so that Hannah can't see it. Hannah grabs the radio that the guys was using. She tries to locate somebody. Lou tells her, don't worry about it. You're not going to get anybody in the storm. And it might tip off Philip. So just bring the radio, but don't use it. And Hannah goes, you know, I was also in the Girl Scouts. And we were never taught how to murder dudes with household items. So what's up? What branch of service were you in? Lou wasn't in the military. She served 26 years as a CIA spy. Oh, you a big timer. Respect? Explains a lot. Philip and V stop for a pee break because, yeah, if you've got a kid with you, you're going to make some pee stops. V finds a wounded butterfly. So cute. Philip gives her like a creepy little speech about how wounded things in nature are meant to die. And when he thinks that she's not looking, he crushes it in his hand. And my girl's like, oh, I believe that is when the full fear set in for her of who is my daddy? Kids are observant. I tell you, they pick up more than we think they do. Hannah and Lou also take a break. And Lou notices the 
cigarette burns in Hannah's arm. And she says, and yet you stayed with him. It's clear that Philip used to abuse Hannah. A little judgy on that, Lou. For Hannah, she thought that she could change him. That her love could fix his brokenness. But she realized no amount of love in the world could fix what was wrong with him. He is a monster. Lou softens, realizing she was a bit harsh, and asks if he ever hurt V. Not yet. People sometimes have a rough time understanding the psychology of people in abusive relationships and how it's not easy for them to walk away, how it is a mental game. There are tactics that they tend to use, you know, isolation, insecurity, manipulation. And in most cases, from what I understand, I'm not an expert, they don't come to you with their true intentions revealed. They, they are charming, they are loving, and then the bomb drops. <laughs> Hannah and Lou come across the carriage, the little buggy that Phil had been using to transport V, but it's empty and they're gone. They realized they had crossed the bridge across uh, whatever that was like a stream, lake, to get to the other side. But the bridge is not fully functional. Lou and Hannah end up falling and falling further behind, another hour behind Philip and V. So they've got to make up for that lost time. They gear up and they keep, keep it moving. They get to the end of the shore and where they see like a, a, a ship that's been wrecked. Hannah is worried. Lou assures her that the storm is so rough, there's no way anyone got off the island. They're still around here somewhere. And Lou finds another clue inside the shipwrecked ship. <laughs> it's another postcard with a picture of a lighthouse. And on the back of it, it says, together forever. She hides this clue from Hannah too. Why is Philip after Lou? What is her involvement in this? Hmm, stay tuned. Lou sees smoke off in the distance and decides to send Hannah on like a, like a little mission to keep her busy. Go to the top of the hill, use the radio, you're right, call the sheriff. Lou decides to pursue the smoke. Hannah gets a hold of the sheriff and says, hey, she manages, before the storm cuts it out, manages to tell him, V's been kidnapped, Philip's alive, he's back, he took her, I'm with Lou, help. Lou tracks the smoke to a cave where she can see from afar through the scope of her rifle that V is sleeping soundly. And then she sees another body under the covers, which is Philip. She gets ready to pull the trigger, but just can't quite do it. She moves in closer and investigates the cave, looking at V, and turns around, but Philip gets the drop on her and forces her to give up her guns. He demands of her, why did you sell me out? Oh, okay, okay. That's why he's mad at Lou, because she's one that got him in trouble with the government. All right, all right. I'm guessing this is why he had to fake this death. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Lou says she did it to protect Hannah and V. And Philip says, you still can't admit that I'm your son. Uh, w w w w excuse me? What? I know some of you are like, duh, Lisa, we figured that out. Well, congratulations to you. I get very immersed in stories and I, I missed it, okay? I was, I was blindsided. I didn't see the connections in front of me. So, bravo. Philip tells Lou, V is the same age I was when you let the men take me. Whoa. He thought she was coming to save him, but he was just a pawn for her mission. More on that later. But it was a trap. If she had gone, they both would have got caught and died. Not the best parenting choice, but okay. Now, that's tough love. Lou had gotten the government to come in and save him, but it didn't matter. She didn't stick around. She stayed a spy. She's chose CIA over him and Philip is pretty angry and bitter about it. He tells her, oh, was it worth it? Because you guys really freaked up Iran. And we realize he's talking about earlier when we saw President Reagan on this TV referring to the 1953 coup that 
was basically UK and United States instigated to overthrow one president in favor of another because oil. Not here to try to teach a history lesson, but it is important to know history. And now I kind of get Lou's comment about wondering if she left the world a more dangerous place. They go hand-to-hand combat and Philip injures her greatly, but he doesn't kill her because he has an end game. He tells her, bring Hannah to the lighthouse. What you got planned, Philip? I don't like it. Meanwhile, the sheriff and his deputy, they're at the station and they've made contact with the authorities. So federal marshals are reaching out to them over the radio saying, hey, we faxed over some pictures. Is this the lady you're talking about? And he saw that it was Lou. He goes, yeah, this is Lou. This is the lady. They're like, are you sure? Yeah. Okay, cool. Bet. This is our investigation now. Y'all back off. We taking over. Sheriff's like, uh, I hear you, dog. Right. But um, there is a missing woman and her child involved. Psh, they don't care. Feds are like, yeah, these two are dangerous. Philip is wanted for like the murder of a bunch of civilians. And Lou is a high profile target of the CIA. We want them bad. Hannah finds Lou hurt, badly hurt, and tries to help her. And then she notices the, the postcards that Lou had been trying to hide from her. And she puts two and two together. That Philip is her son. But Lou tells her more importantly, you are on this island because of me. I orchestrated you and your daughter getting here so that I could watch over you and protect you guys. Lou has some very interesting... Yeah. So Lou admits that when she was undercover in Iran, she had to get close to a very dangerous man. No names were given. And to keep her cover... She had to keep the baby. So Philip was kind of a pawn in her mission. And then she basically deserted him. Hannah snaps at her, tells her she's not a hero. She's a coward. And Lou screams back, everyone is not meant to be a mother. That's a gold nugget for real. Hannah goes, yeah, but you could have at least been human. You walked by your granddaughter every day, never spoke to her, never looked at her. You could have been building a relationship this whole time. Again, Lou's way of doing things, oh, it's, it's not my, it's not how I would do it. But that's just me. Hannah leaves her there wounded and goes to the lighthouse without her. Jax finds Lou. Good dog. He didn't go home after all. He listened. Oh, yeah, did I not mention the fact that she told Jax to go home when they were crossing the bridge? Yeah, my bad. That's why you don't see the dog until later. But more importantly, the sheriff finds Lou. The sheriff helps Lou get out of the the shipwreck that's where she was at the time when hannah left her he helps her get out and he tells her hey the feds the cia they're looking for y'all like why are they looking for you and lou says well i blackmailed them how do you blackmail the cia by having documents proving that they were involved in the coup of iran it's all coming together got it sheriff tells her well they're on their way and Lou's like, oh, we got to go. They're going to just, they're going to just shoot everybody. They don't care. They just want to get the targets. So she distracts the sheriff and steals his ATV and drives off. Hannah reaches the lighthouse first, sees Philip and V at the very, very top of it. And so she climbs the staircase and goes all the way up. Philip is there with their daughter. He's like, hey, where's Lou? Hannah's like, oh, she's, I don't know. She's, she's coming or whatever. He's like, okay, we need her here so we can finish things. What do you have planned, sir? What is this end game you speak of? V convinces Philip to let her go hug her mommy. And as she hugs her, Hannah whispers in her ear to go run and hide. So she runs down the steps. Hannah closes the door, pull, like, pulls out a gun, and has it on him. Don't make me shoot you. He don't believe her. He's had her under his thumb for so long. What's she going to do? She going to pull, pull it. That's what she going to do. And she shot him twice in the shoulder and in the leg. She heads downstairs to go find V. She finds her in a room in the base of the lighthouse. And inside of it, it's fully wired. For a bo- This dude put a bomb in the lighthouse. Okay. There's your end game. This dude wants to end his entire family line. Misery loves company? I mean, why can't you just go out on your own? Let me do me. You, you do you. Lou shows up in the room. And she's wearing a vest. She sees the wires 
she reunites with Hannah and V. And by this time, Philip is making his way down the steps. So they can't go out the way that they came. And the way out is kind of chain linked with a little bit of a chain. So they can't really get fully out. So in the meantime, Lou works on changing the frequency of the bomb. She can't really disarm it, but she can change the frequency. Philip notices her through the through the grate when he gets closer and he says, oh, everybody's here. And he pulls out a detonator and presses it. <gasps> Nothing happens. Lou had successfully changed the frequency. Whew, thank goodness. Lou, Hannah, Envy get out through, they manage to break open the gates on the other, you know, through the little chain link fence and they get out. Philip is following behind them, but you know, he's remember, he's injured. He's like, got shot twice. He's kind of following floor behind them. Lou sees the helicopter in the distance and she says, oh no, the CIA is here and they're on the hunt. We gotta be careful. Everyone's on the run. She waits until her and Hannah and V have or have some kind of cover and she using the radio and a copper bracelet that she'd gotten from the sheriff when he came to rescue her she detonates the lighthouse and makes it blow up <laughs> that ought to get their attention yeah i think it did she tells hannah and v to head for the woods and get to safety hannah tells her we need you don't die on us what matters to you is in front of you lou's like yeah i know go to safety Take care of your kid. I'll take care of mine. Hannah and V run off shelter for safety. Lou and Philip meet each other on the beach. And they start going at it. Fight, 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 fight. He tries to stab her with a pole, but it gets caught in her um, vest. And they just kind of look at each other for a second, stare at each other. And then she pulls him into a hug. And they start hugging. And Philip is bawling like a baby. Like, this dude has some serious issues. He needs therapy. Man, she did a number on this kid. So they're hugging and the helicopters are approaching, but from like from his back, he can't see them. She can see them. And she whispers in his ear, I'm sorry, kid. Just as the CIA pulls out a gun and lights him up. Bop, 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 and they both fall into the ocean. They do not resurface. It's much later. Envy is back home, all cleaned up. It's probably been months now at this point. And she's just stacking cans hanging out with jacks the dog the sheriff pulls up he greets her hey and she notices his arm and she goes hey you've got two bracelets now and we see that he's got two copper bracelets on his arm he says yeah one one's for a friend and he goes inside inside we see hannah being questioned by the caa like you know did lou tell you about documents did they leave anything behind it's very clear that these guys have visited her multiple times bothering her leave her alone she don't know nothing and what she knows she ain't gonna tell y'all y'all can't be trusted the cia agents leave i mean she's not giving them anything and so it's just her and the sheriff now and we can see the house is packed all boxes she and v are moving to seattle and he tells her that she gave a you know a sweet you know eulogy il 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 oh my gosh that's not the word eulogy look i'm just gonna put it right here this word during the funeral, that's what she does for um, Lou. She speaks at her funeral. And Hannah tells the sheriff, sometimes I think about her, she just gets on my nerves, and other times I just miss her. And he says, isn't that how it is with family? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Next, they're on the boat, headed across the ocean to Seattle with Jax. And we hear the voiceover of Lou's letter being read again where she's talking about you know her regrets but her leaving the house and everything to Hannah because she thinks that she will leave the world a better place and we see Jax like turn his head and look behind him at the at the second level at the people on the second part of the level of the boat and the next thing we see is a over the shoulder shot of a very familiar hand holding a pair of binoculars and on the arm is a copper bracelet just like the one that the sheriff had roll credits final thoughts i really enjoyed this movie i felt that act one the beginning was a bit thin on the introduction um, of these characters in this world but once the journey got going we were able to pull back the layers of these characters and find out more information as it came. And it more than made up for it. 
I loved all the themes and subject matter that they put into this film. You know, spy, intrigue, CIA, uh, physical abuse, childhood trauma, how it shapes us, how it affects us, relationships. It's, it was a lot. Not to mention the question of our involvement in the politics of other countries and their government and if it's benefited the world as a whole. According to this movie, not so much. There's definitely a deeper conversation to be had here. So leave a comment. Let's start it up. Let's talk about it. If you enjoyed hanging out with me today, please hit that like button, subscribe, ring the notification bell so that, uh, you know, we can kind of make this a regular thing. You and I, let's do this. Till next time. Later.